kind of a little agitated fella. And why is he agitated? I don't know. Is there a cat laying there? I don't get it. Ball four at Farquhar. Looks off in the distance wondering where that pitch was. Close to strike three and instead it's ball four. Tripod. And he wants to talk not just to Farquhar, but to everybody in the infield. And the Twins have Jimenez, Andreanza, Grossman, and Sano. And who would you pinch hit for at this point? Vargas is 0 for 5, but you know, you're, you're trying to build players' confidence now, especially with the right in the mouth, the way he said, well, swing it, of the bag. It all depends on the situation, too. I think Poor old cat just wants to sleep. I think Paul would not hesitate to bring Robbie Grossman in because of his on base percentage and the fact that he can grind out some bats himself. <laughs> I know he's going to try to give Miguel Sano the day off, and it's been a long day. 1 0. Polanco takes high 2 0. So we mentioned Farquhar's problems. No problem with velocity, he's got plenty of that. But 22 and a third innings, a dozen walks, now 13 with Dozier aboard. Polanco's trying to give him an out, and it's 2 and 0. Oh. And a strike, right down the middle. Morrison at first, Longoria at third, they're crashing. They are charging hard. Longoria, one of the better throwing third basemen in the game. And Morrison's a left-handed thrower. Put down beautifully, right out of the dirt, barely out of the grass, and Dozier goes to second. Don't you call that second you ball. Trying to do that much right there. Great job. He'll get a handshake as he comes into the dugout. And Joe had a day. He got four hits, a single, a double, a home run, a single. He was walked once unintentionally. And I'm guessing he will be walked intentionally here. So a four-hit game for Maurer. The average up to 285. And Maurer will be intentionally walked. Second, Vargas do up and he will come up. Vargas 0 for 5, three strikeouts, a ground out and a fly ball. So you're saying he's due. <laughs> was at first base in the eighth inning. Tried to score on a single. And was thrown out at the plate. Strike one on Vargas. This series we've seen several calls out at home plate. Yeah. A lot of runners trying to take the extra base. <laughs> Swing and a miss at 95. And Farquhar gets a hit quickly on two. Kepler hitting behind Vargas. Foul back. And 
contact at least. Shadow's really tough. Oh, I was just saying, how can you hit what you can't see? Yeah, the ball's coming out of the shadows and into the sun just out in front of home plate. So if there's any break and spin out at all, it's going to be so hard to follow and track the baseball. Oh, and two. Dozier third. Throw is not in time. <laughs> Brian Dozier stealing third base. And that changes everything. Well, it's going to have to bring the infield in for one. And the outfield. Yep. And the Rays took a look at it. Dozier in safely. And then taking off. Infield in. Outfield in. Count is one and two to Vargas. Strike two down. And that will bring up Kepler. Kepler 0 for 5 on the day. Right there. Good pitch. <laughs> well, you said it before. You can't hit what you can't see. I'm not sure he can recognize that pitch at all. And now it'll be up to Max Kepler, who's had a couple chances to win this one already. Rosario's ready to celebrate. Up and away, ball one. for Escobar, and this is surprising given Farquhar's lack of command. Escobar going back in the dugout, it's going to be Miguel Sano, which that's surprising too. I would think maybe Robbie Grossman here because he does a better job of getting on base, but it's going to be Sano. The crowd on their feet, they're excited to see this. Sano coming to the plate here, having struck out in eight straight at bats. Hitting for Escobar. And the fans here delirious with the pitch hitting move. Well, this is a tough spot for any hitter to come into because of the shadows. And now time called. Longoria calling time third base umpire. And they want to bring Beckham in. And now they're Swing him over. Uh, Martinez over to the pull side. Sucre. It's not just this year. Farquhar's had issues with his control in the past. So the back-to-back -back intentional walks are two of them this inning. A bit surprising. He's back in the strike zone to even the count at one and one. Well, I wouldn't be surprised if uh, Sano was taking a strike there, maybe on his own. But uh, trying to get a feel for the shadows for no other reason, just to track a couple baseballs. One and one to Sano. Up and in, two and one. Well, he's walked the bases loaded. One regular walk and two intentional walks. And you're putting a lot of pressure on a pitcher that has had control problems 
to be able to control and command his pitches here when the game's on the line. Two and one, two and so no. oh. That's his pitch. Two and two. And a little giddy up, 95 mile an hour fastball. Belt high inside corner. So no, just missed it. Sure that you're throwing the ball into the strike zone. 
because hitters are having a tough time making contact, any good contact so far. We haven't seen it since the shadows up here. So there's got to be something to it. Turtle back to the mound. Easy play for Belisle. He gets rid of it quickly. One down. Go back to the pitch. To Miguel Sano. First pitch, fastball away, way away. Second pitch, fastball right down the middle. He's tracking it. Third one up and in. Fourth one, middle and that's his pitch. And then he follows one off down and away. Another one over the middle of the plate. And finally, he throws it by him up to the zone. But he had many chances in that at bat. So it's a combination. Miguel not swinging it real well right now. And the shadows just uh, didn't really pick up the baseball. One down on the 12. And now back up. The ball hit him, I believe, while he was still in the box. And it's one strike. You're asking Belisle to pitch in uncharted territory here, too. He's usually a one-inning guy, and now he's asked to go a second inning. You see, he doesn't get his foot out of the box. He comes off the plate and hits him, so it's a dead ball. Dead yeah. ball, foul ball. It's a... It's going to be his game for a while. I don't know how long Paul will want to stretch up. Matt Belisle, but as long as this game is in this situation, it's not going to be in any other situation. Matt Belisle is going to be your guy for a while. Yesterday's starter, Alberto Mejia, was added to the roster at the expense of Adam Wilk, who was designated for assignment. Yep. Yeah. Nobody there. Well, there's well, not there. nobody, but nobody who's is available. He's got to be having fun. Who's he talking to? Except with all his friends, right? <laughs> on the ground, Sano can't field it cleanly. And back in will reach on a Sano error. And it hit the glove and rolled out. And now Michael Martinez with one man on and one man out. Seventh man that Belisle has faced. Gave up a two on walk in the 11th. Now a one out error has a man aboard here in the 12th. Runner goes. Pitch swung on and fouled. And the Twins might have gotten a break there because Beckham looked like he had a good break. Yeah, he did. Kevin Cash trying to force the issue. They haven't had a lot of base runners in scoring position since they tied the game. Still here. But they're going for an out. Trying 
trying to keep the spirit of Twins baseball on the excitement level here. The Summit League Conference showcases NCAA Division I competition right here in our region. And Midco Sports Network's Inside the Summit League brings you Inside the Conference's competition. Join Tom Neiman as he breaks down the best action and highlights on Inside the Summit League. Thursdays at 6.30 Central, only on Midco Sports Network. This is how we do sports. Only one place can hold it. Only one place can handle it. Billy Lotto has packed the fairgrounds to compare so can all these vehicles in one place during the trial and discovery event. Let's sell 2017 Ram Express half ton for two seventy nine a month. Just two seventy nine a month with twenty nine ninety nine down for a brand new Ram. Or try the new twenty seventeen Chrysler Pacifica Touring by taking five thousand off MSRP. Offers available through May thirty first. Billy and Chrysler Jeep Dodge Ram. The W is live fairgrounds now through June fifth. Or BillionAuto.com. Lakes, stars, delighted city. 
six on Fox Sports North. Pretty impressive relief outing for Matt Belisle. Paul Mahler comes over to congratulate him on two necessary and effective innings. Yeah, and I don't know as though he's done yet. Uh, <laughs> you know, it's not one of those take it on up. Started this ball game five hours ago. First pitch at 112, and now we're five hours deep. I have a sharp in my pencil for the last time. Just tell me. All right. I'll agree with that. Rosario will lead things off. Far corner still out there for the Rays. Well, right back to the mound. And an easy first half. <laughs> Not a bad idea, just poorly executed, one away, and Buxton, who is one for four, tried to bunt for a hit unsuccessfully in the sixth. Yeah, you get no point in a ball game, but we're five hours deep, the hitters start getting creative. They, they want to get off the field themselves. I mean, it's human nature. They want to somehow make this in, and sometimes that complicates the issue because you still have to grind it out. And I know Paul is still trying to encourage him to get up there and get good at bats. McNeely's got a bloody nose as he's warming up. One strike to Buxton. And now two. Twins had a threat with all the walks in the 11th inning. They never did get a hit. I think their last hit was Dozier's roller through the right side of the infield in the 8th inning. Yeah. That's how tough it's been to see, and that might explain why Rosario tried to bunt. So we have a foul. Now all of the issues that we have here would be relieved if we had cloud cover, but if anything, it's becoming more clear. Yeah, it's clear right off here, although it's getting to that point where the sun's going to start setting. Oh, and 2 to Buxton. And he's gone on strikes, two down. And that'll bring up Castro. Castro's had a good day at the plate with two hits and two walks, a run score. Marquardt survived the threat the Twins put against him where he created himself with the leadoff walk to Dozier. Now, we to have a Strike one.
That's why State Farm protects them together to help life go right. Combine and save. Talk to a State Farm agent. Every truck guy has their own way of conveying powerful. Yeah, boy. That looks like a monster coming at each of Holy smokes. That is awesome. Strong. You got the basic and you got the beefy. I just think it looks mean. Incredible. No way. Getting goosebumps. It's the Chevy Memorial Day sales event. Find your tag and get over 9,300 total value on select Silverado crew cabs when you finance with GM Financial. Chevrolet, the number one selling brand in the Twin Cities. Uh, no bars. Oh no, looks like somebody needs a new network. When I got this unlimited plan, they told me they were all the same. They're not. Verizon has the largest, most reliable 4G LTE network in America. Basically made for places like this. I mean, what if it was just us out here? Right. So, I ordered you a car. Thank you. You don't want to be out here at night because of the coyotes. Okay, thanks, bro. Bye. Be nice to have your car for some shelter. Bye. When it really, really matters, you need the best network and the best unlimited. Just $45 per line for four lines. 5-5. Five, five. The Twins getting a couple of runs in the bottom of the eighth, but then the Rays answered with two against Brandon Kitzler. Neither team has scored in extra innings. And we head to the 13th at Justin Haley. We'll come into the ball game. He pitched here Friday night, pitched a scoreless ninth inning. And he faced Weeks, Norris, and Robertson. Set them down three up, three down. Here in the 13th, he'll face the top of the Rays lineup. Dickerson, Kiermaier, and Longoria. Well, it's an important game. It may be the most important situation that Haley has pitched in this year. Even though we're in the top of the 13th, the tie game where the game's on the line. Dickerson with three straight hits at one point in the game in innings five, seven, and nine. Get a ground ball to power his last time up. And with this plate appearance, we begin our seventh trip through the batting orders. The Twins will do the same thing at the bottom of the inning with Brian Dozier's seventh plate appearance. Game was uh, still a winnable game, but you know the story, I'm sure, by now. The Rule 5 guy picked off from the Red Sox organization by way of the Angels and Padres. Had some arm issues in late April. On the ground, Dozier gets in front of it. One down. And Haley getting that big first out. That'll bring up Kiermaier. So it's an important first out. Getting ahead of the count, it doesn't matter. We talked about it five hours ago about uh, Kyle Gibson and the ability to get ahead in counts. He did a pretty good job of that. And here we are five, six hours. I don't know how many hours. I forgot <laughs> how many hours later it is. But uh, same scenario. Haley needs to get in there and get ahead in counts. Delivers low. Alex Colomy, their closer, getting loose. He may get the 13th, whether they have a lead or not. 1-0 and oh to Kiermaier. That's it to center, and it'll drop in front of Buxton. So Kiermaier aboard with a one-out single. And Haley's going to have to pay attention to over there because I'm sure Kevin Cash is going to do what he can to try to get him over. Breaking ball that stayed out over the plate. Kiermaier has been a pretty good player this series. Had a great series, actually. The boss is in front of Byron Buxton. Tampa's got a base runner aboard. He had three innings of futile at bats with the shadow situation, but now no shadows, and Kiermaier aboard with a single. Here's Longoria. Popped up, final out of play. Longoria battled Kitchler. Eventually got a two-out RBI game-tying double back in the ninth. And he was uh, called out on strikes in the 11th. One strike. Haley to Longoria. And we 
seen that so often from Hay. It's 89 miles per hour. The hitters are laid out because of the deceptive delivery. And it's very deliberate. He doesn't, uh, he doesn't rush. He keeps his timing and his cadence very slow. And then he throws across his body, which is something hitters don't see every day for a guy as tall as he is. at stolen bases this year. Looked at the right. Kepler over. And out number two. Haley does not have a major league decision. And he'd like to pick up his first major league win. One more out for the Twins to have a chance to do that. We're in the top of the 13th. Logan Morrison will bat with a runner at first and two down. Kinsler missing the same opportunity for just the second time this year. Decent chance Kiermeyer takes off here. I got a question for you, Jim. Yeah? Eddie Gordano seems like he's the long ranger down the bulk, and I don't even think Tyler Duffy's down there. Is he down there in case Paul has to take one of his bench players to go up? No, I have to warm up. Yeah. There's our bullpen right there, and Eddie all by himself. Yeah, in case Jim is, if you know, we play another couple innings and the Twins don't want to disrupt their rotation. Well, I just got a note that this is the longest game in the history of Target Field so far. So every tick of the clock is going to set a new record. Kevin Cash, when he was a player, was a catcher. So I'm guessing here on this pitch, he's going to ask Kiermaier to try to steal a base, uh, knowing this has got to be the longest day in a game at Target Field, but particularly long for Castro, the catcher. Yeah, it surpassed uh, back on May 1st, 2014, versus the Dodgers. That game lasted 5 hours and 11 minutes. Okay. So this is, uh, we're in the books. So we got that going for us. One and one to Logan Morrison. Kind of a false start by Kiermaier, but he didn't go, and it's two and one. Of course, on, on the flip side, Kiermaier's played two innings, or 12 innings, too, so maybe his legs aren't quite as fresh as <laughs> he would like. Still third. Well, it's a couple innings ago. Not even anywhere close to being one of the longest games in baseball, but by inning wise, it's getting up there. I mean, it's taken a long time to play. There goes Kiermaier. The pitch lifted foul. Two and two, and he did take off on the two one pitch. You know, I rarely have any sympathy for umpires, but the guys out there today, they've been standing, especially first, second, and third. Carlos Torres, Chris Guccione, and Dana DeMuth. Well, well, the umpire that's in an umpire's crouch for five hours. Well, you know, he's moving. He's, he's getting a little exercise. I guarantee you his back's not as sore as the guy standing there all day long. Two and two from Haley to Morrison. And he stepped off, so it's not a walk. Now the 2-2 to Morrison. 
Biermeyer does not go, and it's inside three and two. Sue's on deck. Well, Haley just does not want to get Kimmeyer in the scoring position here. He needs to throw a strike. He'll play behind the runner with a left-handed batter up. And now the 3-2. Loop to left, a base hit. Kiermaier will hold up at second base. And that'll get Souza a chance with the go-ahead run and scoring position. Two hits here in the 13th against Haley. Good hitting right there. Logan Morrison gets a ball up, but he fists it and drives it the other way. He had a pull shift on, and he goes the opposite field. Suzo with three singles a walk. He was retired on the ground ball to Dozier his last time up. And Castro going to the mound. He's gone. Everybody in the Twins bullpen except Tyler Duffy and Kyle Gibson, the starter. I wonder if Irvin Santana has already been at home and got the barbecue half gone. He's pitching tomorrow and I think he's going to have to go deep in the game. Strike one. There's Irv. He's still hanging out. Souza will look back at the home plate umpire because that pitch was nowhere as close to being a strike. <laughs> well, it's good to see that James Hoy is getting with the spirit of things, too. <laughs> <laughs> and you're Souza, and you're going, okay, well, that's closer than the last one. I better swing at it. <laughs> well, again, it's to me. I feel more for the home plate on my end because they got to focus on every pitch. And it's true. Been out there for over five hours. That's all it two. Haley trying to put up a zero in the top of the 13th inning. It's one and two. It has been a battle. Twins have committed a couple of errors, so have the Rays. Kepler with an error in right, Sano with an error in third. One and two to Susan. And now three and two. And Gorgeous is on deck. Sousa really has had a good at bat here. This ball clearly off the plate again. And that's why I agree with Joan Brinkman about framing. Jason Castro tried to bring that ball back in, but uh, that ain't going to work. Full count, excuse me, 2-2 two -two the count with two men on and two out. And time called. So yeah, Haley's got one pitch to burn here. Castro's going to chat with him about it. But... Or you don't want to run the count full here. You've got a runner, Kiermaier at second, who runs well to begin with. The last thing the Twins need is to give him a walking lead yeah. at second base. And that's one of the reasons Jason's out there is make sure you maybe do a double double look at second base or pause or change the cadence a little bit for that base runner. Going up. Two and two. Got him looking as Sousa can't believe it. It's right there, wasn't it? It looked like it was six inches outside. Brian Dozier will lead off the bottom of the 13.
1817 before 1859 baseball umpires sat behind home plate in rocking chairs put some flavor in your break with new snapple mango tea make time for snapple Talk to is already here. I need one. Well, I need a cell phone. 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 Cubano from Sarks! Applewood pulled pork. Yarks! Swiss cheese, pickles, and mustard. Yarks! Using the Cubano. Authentic flavor from a better subway. Yarks! Yarks! Tomorrow at 12.30 on Fox Sports North.
Having seen him go out that way yesterday, that ball looked like it might travel farther than it did. One down. Well, there's the Tampa Bay Rays lineup card, and you can see they don't have a lot of players left either. Lombardo, who pitched yesterday, the hard-throwing left-hander, the only other Tampa Bay Ray pitcher in the bullpen. They got a couple guys on the bench, but Derek Norris, just like uh, Chris Jimenez, both managers very hesitant to bring in their backup catcher in case of injury. On the outside corner to Polanco, Farquhar, excuse me, Alvarado threw 19 pitches in the ball game yesterday. Polanco with a single, a sacrifice bunt, and a sacrifice fly. That's the left center. And coming in to make the catch is Borges out number two. And Joe Mauer's got four hits and two walks today. Come on, Joe. Let's end this game, Joe Mauer. His home run in the seventh inning tied the game. Bottom of the 13th, two outs. Get it, Cat. Joe Mauer's up with two. Nobody on base. And we're up. Time for the 5-5 five, five tie, baby! 5-5 tie! Yahoo! Come on, baby! Come on, here we go! Yeah, managers are pretty protective of their Go, Joe! And, uh, don't want to work the pitch count. He's only throwing nine pitches this Oh, time. in the dirt! You get him up around 15 to 20, and it's a different scenario. Nine. Oh, wake up, everybody. Wake up and smell the coffee! I'd say go ahead and throw another inning, but we don't want him much more over 20. Pitch in the dirt took a bite out of Sucre. Long afternoon for him to begin with. One and one, the Mauer. Up and half away, two and one. Two to one to Joe. on deck. Three to one to Joe. Well, Joe's still working the count. Still having a quality at that. Three to one to Joe. <laughs> His seventh plate appearance, he's reached <laughs> the other six. <laughs> Four hits and three walks. And a walk. Come on, Vargas! Come on, Kenny! Woohoo! Well, Vargas, six plate appearances, he struck out four times. He's grounded out to second base, and he's flown out to right field.
Fourteenth inning, kitty cat. Ow! Ow! 